Well, it certainly sounds like the optimal solution for both the farmer and the environment, precise application of pesticides and maximum yield. Here to talk with us about precision farming is Martin Keim, an agricultural economist from the University of Göttingen. Thanks for joining us here. Now, are these methods that we just saw primarily of interest for farmers in the industrialized world, or could they help small farmers in developing countries, too? Well, for small farmers, uh, they're not really appropriate uh, because they're connected to large machines and that's something that small farmers just don't use and it wouldn't make sense in their context. Now, um, as you just said there, these methods are most effective for very large farms. What about the smaller farms in Germany and in Europe that may be able to, to use this type of equipment? Can they benefit? Well, smaller farms in Germany are farms that um, have uh, at least uh, 30, 40 hectares. And uh, even for them, um, it's a question, it's a big investment. And uh, it's, it's something that um, uh, could maybe, if it's becoming cheaper, uh, become profitable for them. Uh, but in developing countries, we're still uh, talking about very much smaller farms, often below five hectares. And, and that's something where uh, I believe other kinds of technologies are needed. Can these uh, precision technologies help keep us ahead of the kind of Malthusian scenarios where there won't be enough food to go around? Well, technologies are, are going to play an important role in order to increase uh, the, uh, food production, and that uh, will be very necessary. Um, but uh, technologies uh, uh, cannot certainly uh, get uh, around the distribution problem, and uh, we do have both. Um, hunger is uh, a production and a distribution problem. What kind of role do genetically modified plants play in all this? Well, we've observed uh, the commercial application of genetically modified uh, plants for the last 15 years, and uh, that includes by small farms in developing countries. And the application so far, especially uh, the genetically modified cotton and maize, um, there have been very promising uh, examples where small farms uh, are benefiting and small farms are able to uh, escape from poverty through such kinds of new technologies. You have said that it would take only an investment of $150 into agrarian research to pull one person out of poverty. How does that work? Well, that's uh, coming out of a, a large uh, statistical analysis of how effective uh, agricultural research investments have been in the past. And that uh, is a figure that relates to uh, research that has been carried out at the International Rice Research Institute uh, that has a mandate uh, to develop new rice varieties for farmers in developing countries. And uh, indeed, it has been shown that it's very, very effective and that on the average, uh, to lift one people out of poverty, it's an investment of 150 uh, US dollars into appropriate agricultural research, breeding in particular. Well, 80 percent of, of the research worldwide is performed in Europe. Um, how much of that development and, and that research will only be a benefit to big industrial farmers, and how much of it benefits smaller farms? We would we observe in the past, uh, say, 10, 15 years in, in Europe is that uh, there has been little research into increasing yields because it was believed that yield increases are not what we need. And uh, now it's found out that uh, this is uh, exactly what we need. Uh, and this is especially also what developing countries need. Therefore, um, the research is only partly effective for developing countries. And uh, there needs to be more specific research targeting the needs of small farms in, in those countries. All right, Martin Kahn, thank you very much for joining us here today.